The day of this video's upload, February the 3rd, marks the birthday of a very influential, though not particularly well-known, paleontologist. Gideon Algernon Mantell played a major role in the early years of this science, making some incredibly important discoveries that shaped a great deal of our knowledge of prehistoric animals, particularly dinosaurs. His life was one of great success, but one that eventually came to a tragic end. Nevertheless, his contributions to science have not been forgotten, and so I'm making this video to help ensure that he is remembered for a very long time to come. We'll start by looking at where Gideon Mantell came from. He was born in 1790 in a small town in England called Lewis. He was the son of a shoemaker, and he showed a great interest in geology from a very young age, often collecting fossils from nearby quarries, something he would continue to do for the rest of his life. However, Mantell actually went into a medical career, establishing a practice in his hometown in 1816. He also married a woman called Mary Ann Woodhouse this same year, and together they would go on long walks in the countryside looking for fossils. A few years later, a key moment in Mantell's life happened. The story goes that in 1822, Gideon was visiting a patient, and while she was waiting for him to finish, his wife went for a walk. It was then that she found a very strange tooth. She showed this tooth to Mantell, who became instantly fascinated by it. This tooth was unlike anything he had ever seen before. But it was not the only mysterious fossil that he had encountered, since he had been uncovering strange bones from nearby areas, specifically the South Downs, for the last few years. Mantell was able to recognise that these bones were not coming from marine animals like all the other fossils found from this area so far. Instead, they were terrestrial and freshwater creatures. So he understood that he had something unique here, and just after the tooth was found, he published his first book, The Fossils of the South Downs. In an attempt to find out what his strange tooth could be, he showed it and others that had been found to fellow scientists of his time. Mantell was of the opinion that the teeth must have belonged to a giant herbivorous reptile, which of course turned out to be true. Unfortunately, the other scientists of the Geological Society of London all dismissed him, seeming to not have much respect for the man as the son of a shoemaker and someone who did not attend university. Even Georges Cuvier, the famous and widely respected French naturalist, came to the conclusion that the teeth were those of a rhinoceros. However, Mantell did not give up. He continued to send teeth to Cuvier, and eventually the naturalist changed his mind, agreeing with Mantell that they looked like they belonged to a giant herbivorous reptile. Encouraged by this, Mantell discovered that his teeth looked fairly similar to those of the iguana, a modern-day herbivorous reptile, and so he developed the idea that giant extinct iguana-looking creatures once roamed the earth. He reconstructed the animal as having walked on all four limbs, but later made discoveries that showed the creature to have possessed short front legs, which would have allowed it to be bipedal. By 1825, it was widely accepted that Mantell was correct in his interpretation of a huge extinct herbivorous reptile. Now, he just had to decide what to name his new animal. Initially, Mantell considered the name Iguanosaurus, but it was pointed out to him that this name could also apply to the currently living iguana, since the name means iguana lizard. So he settled on the name Iguanodon meaning Iguana Tooth. Mantell published his description of Iguanodon in 1825, and soon after was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society. Over the next few years, Mantell published several books and continued to work on Iguanodon, as well as continuing his work as a doctor, and by 1827 his fourth son had been born. It seemed that things were going well for Mantell. However, he then made a decision that ended up being a terrible mistake, causing his life to decline from then on. In 1833, he moved to Brighton, along with his family, which proved to be very challenging for him. Mantell was unable to establish a successful medical practice in Brighton, with potential patients seeming to think he would become distracted by his geological studies. The Mantell family soon ran into money problems, which got so bad that the town's council eventually had to help them by converting their large house into a fossil museum. However, the museum took up most of the rooms in the house, sparing only a single room for Mantell himself, but no rooms for his family, who had to move out. Eventually, the museum failed anyway, leaving Mantell desperate. To add to all that, his daughter Hannah became very ill, and so Mantell had no choice but to write to the British Museum, offering to sell his whole fossil collection to them for £5,000. They agreed to take it for £4,000 in the end, and not long after, Mantell moved to London to take over a medical practice there. Then, things got really bad for him. Gideon's wife Marianne left him in 1839, and in the same year his oldest son Walter moved to New Zealand. The next year, his daughter Hannah died from tuberculosis, aged 18. And then, the year after that, Mantell was involved in an awful carriage accident that left him crippled for the rest of his life. He allegedly fell from where he was sitting on the carriage, ended up getting tangled in the reins, and was then dragged across the ground, leaving him with severe damage to his spine. 
and throughout all this, he was arguing with and being overshadowed by his former friend, Sir Richard Owen. I've already done a video on this man, and although he was a truly excellent and skilled anatomist, he has a reputation for being a fairly controversial figure. Owen and Mantell argued about all sorts over the years, having disagreements about dinosaurs, as well as pterosaurs and ancient birds. Richard Owen was the one to name the group known as dinosaurs in 1842, and although Mantell had discovered most of the dinosaur species known at the time, Owen's naming of the group essentially made them his creation in the eyes of the public. Now I'm not saying that Owen didn't deserve the credit he got, he absolutely made huge contributions to our understanding of past life. However, he did seem to take some of the glory that Mantell also deserved for himself. The arguments between the pair eventually became so bad that Owen actually attempted to stop the Royal Society from awarding Mantell the Royal Medal for his work on Iguanodon in 1849, but Mantell did receive the award in the end. However, even after Mantell's death, Owen managed to deride him, as we'll see soon. In 1845, Mantell started to take opium to soothe the pain in his back, but despite this pain, he continued to work on fossils for the next few years. He published several books on fossils and geology between 1847 and 1851, still being able to find some happiness in his studies. However, everything came to an end in 1852. On the 10th of November of that year, Gideon Mantell overdosed on opium, taking 32 times the maximum dosage. He quickly fell into a coma and died that afternoon. A post-mortem was performed on his body, which revealed that he had been suffering from scoliosis, a condition in which the spine becomes curved, due to his carriage accident 11 years earlier. Richard Owen then arranged for a section of Mantell's badly damaged spine to be removed and pickled, preserving it for display in the Royal College of Surgeons, seemingly as a sign of some sort of victory over the man. Despite Gideon Mantell fading into history somewhat, and being superseded by Owen as he took much of the recognition for the early work on dinosaurs, Mantell's contributions to science were numerous and significant. He showed that the Wealdon series, a sequence of rock strata in southern England, was formed in a freshwater environment, and also published a total of eight books throughout his life, describing various features of the geology and fossils of South England. And, of course, he made highly important contributions to the study of dinosaurs. Not only did he describe Iguanodon, but he also described the Ankylosaur Hyliosaurus, the Stegosaur Regnosaurus, and the sauropod Pelorosaurus. Gideon Mantell is now buried in West Norwood Cemetery in London, and there is also a monument to him and his achievements at the location where the first Iguanodon teeth were found by his wife back in 1822. So, due to Mantell's remarkable contributions to science and our understanding of the past, I feel that he should be remembered and honoured as the great scientist he was. I hope that this video has been able to raise some more appreciation for the man and the troubled life that he lived, and I hope that you will not forget Gideon Mantell. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world and the wonderful life we share it with, please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.